Hello, Mariam. How are you doing? Great. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Thank you for joining us on Mindful Leaders, Inherited Legacies, and for welcoming us to your childhood neighborhood here in the Physics Institute um, Park in this area that we are, which is where you actually grew up as a child, uh, where your father, your famous father, Robert Avakian, physicist and academic, actually worked here in the Accelerator Lab, not too far from here, I believe. Mariam, you are a doctor of internal medicine. You, are, you specialize in endocrinology, um, in thyroid diseases, diabetes, um, but you're also a PhD. PhD in neuroendocrinology. I mean, I can't even say it. That's just how complicated it is. Uh, you've published numerous books. You are an active board member and a vice president of the board of the Armenian Health Care Association, is that of how the Bay Area? Of the Bay Area, Area of San yes, Francisco, in yes. San Francisco, as well as a member of different committees such as the uh, Armenian International Medical Committee. And recently, which I would love to talk about a bit later, you've initiated a foundation called EAX that supports our Armenian ed uh, children's education through sports. So you've got your hands full and, and you don't stop. And I, it's, it's evident from the energy that you have. The first topic I want to start off with it relates to your family history. And the reason why I say this is because I feel uh, when we spoke before about your family history, especially about your maternal side, your maternal grandmother's side, I really felt the sense of energy and beauty that came through from her story. Her name was Haranush, your, your maternal grandmother, and her mother, Pailun, both from Van. Take me through what her, her, who Haranush is and why she has been such a source of inspiration to you. Apart from your father, obviously, one of the other sources of inspiration has been Haranush. Why? Haranush was an amazing person. Well, first of all, she was my roommate, so I got to know her really well. She um, was born in Vaughan, and at the age of six, uh, Vaughan was in the siege. And I mean, it's a very famous story how the Armenians actually got together and they created an amazing resistance and they actually won the uh, resistance. So my grandma was always impacted by that, by the, by the war, by her family, losing a lot of her family members and by the whole trauma of the exodus going from Van to Yerevan and going on foot, you know, something that, you know, my entire life I want to do that walk from Van to Echmiadzin. That's how they walked. Grandma Haranush was, um, as I said, amazing character. She had, she was uh, one of nine children who, with her brother, they survived the genocide. And after that, her life wasn't any easier. You know, she was uh, announced as an enemy of the nation, something totally crazy if anyone could remember my grandmother. And as an enemy of nation, first she was sent to jail. And then after that, she was sent to a concentration camp to the Gulag, where she stayed for 14 years uh, and was released after Stalin uh, died. So her life story, I mean, it always amazes me how it's so hard for us to imagine their lives. When she came back from the uh, gulag and she saw my, um, my mother with her girlfriend, at the, at the time my mother was at the university in a physics faculty, she asked, which one of you is my daughter? I mean, things that we absolutely cannot imagine, that kind of a trauma. We take for granted, don't we? Yeah, I mean, it's like a stories that, but her story inspired me and mostly because despite all those, you know, all the unfortunate events in her life and growing up as an orphan because, you know, her uh, grandmother raised her, um, um, that's, that's of course my mother, but my grandmother lived, uh, spending so much time in Gulag, she remained as an incredibly positive person. She was an optimist. She loved life. She loved Vaughn. Her famous, I mean, it's not her famous, but she always repeated, in this life, Vaughn, in the other life, paradise. Mm -hmm. So that's how, and I think that kind of that kind of a love of her loving Vaughn actually gave me a 
my interest, my love to Yerevan because I went and visited Van. I had to see my grandmother's homeland. Um, it didn't give me any kind of, uh, I mean, there was no, Van is like a, this very uninteresting city right now, except for the incredible history, Armenian history in a sense, the Urartian history that we have there, but there was no connection. But her love for Van gave me my love for Yerevan. You know, uh, I think about um, your grandmother, like you said, she was only six years old during the exodus of the genocide. And out of the nine siblings, only two remained living, her and her brother, Markar. So her mother, she and her brother were the only surviving people that made it um, by foot, as you say, all the way to Echmiadzin, which is why I think it's symbolic that you too want to one day be able to do that walk. Uh, you've applied a few times, obviously, to try to do that, um, the, the, the foot uh, voyage uh, from Van to Echmiadzin. But I think it just shows that even, even afterwards, um, how much of uh, even the, her own exile from during Stalin's age, I mean, twice having to be uprooted and having to undergo this kind of like a major trauma, yet still having the resiliency and that, that positive outlook what is it about that? Why, why some people cannot, you know, fathom and not, you know, they go through manic depressions, where the, whereas others, like your grandmother, seem to find the most positive points in life. What is it about, you know, where does that come from? You've now assessed your grandmother. What, yeah, what do you Laura, think? Yeah, it it's, it's a wonderful, it's a great question. I think that it could be, you know, in medicine, we call it genetics and epigenetics. It's, uh, which is the impact on your genetic makeup, uh, which is epi epigenetics. But I think it's probably her genetic positivity. And I'm hoping that some of it is in me. I feel yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure your husband, Jerry, so, feels it. So, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think that that um, optimism that she had and love of everything, even I recently found her letters from the Gulag. And even there, you know, she talks about, a, you know, once a month they were given white bread and she loved it. You know, they were, you know, uh, occasionally when the, it was very cold, they would keep them inside instead of, you know, kind of uh, working on the ice. So it's, it's like, I don't know, I guess it's, I think it's mostly genetic, but certainly eventually coming and finding her family, finding her daughter, finding her grandchildren. And she was loved not only by her grandchildren, but all of our friends. All of our friends. She was a grandma for everyone. Right. You mentioned also that she, um, uh, you know, even people that you know in the in the physics institute environment where she was, um, people during her funeral that you know were just that they knew her. There were lots of people that came that kissed her hand because that's how loved and respected she was because she gave that kind of warm energy to everybody. It wasn't just to you. So I, I want to turn over to the fact that, you know, I always look at the fact of the, the transmission of trauma and how transgenerationally we actually inherit many of our historical traumas. Um, you, would, what connection, apart from the energy, do you see um, between who you've become as a, a woman, as a professional, um, and your connection to your memory of the genocide, and not just through Hudanush, but in general. What is that connection? Do you see one? Because you've written a lot, right? You've done a lot of research, so obviously you do have a pull there. What Can you explain to me what type of connection you see? Actually, when I, 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 like you said, I wrote a book which is called On the Other Side of Mount Ararat, and I thought about exactly la, uh, that uh, for a long time because I thought that when I'm trying to tell my children about the genocide and it goes through me from my grandmother to me and from me to my children, I wanted my children to see the not just the death and devastation and losing of a one and a half million people, but to see that they were real people, real love between the families, really people that did an incredible job, like, you know, I'm, you know, propagate teamwork. Resistance of Van was a teamwork that Armenia did, which should be talked more about it. So I think that um, I, my grandma always, every April 24th, she alone by herself with her arth arthritic knees and hands, she would walk up the Tsitserna Gabert just by herself. She would do it early in the morning. So, and 
I think that she didn't forget that. Her positivity did not mean that she forgot everything. And that's, I think, we need to do that. And that's what I'm trying uh, to do in my family and through my children and through my community. You know, kind of look at the positive things that can, can just make us all together and work uh, together instead of just, you know, kind of... Uh, uh, keep, uh, you know, thinking about the dwelling on negative. Mm -hmm. Well, you, so I agree with you. It's not, it's uh, the fact of forgetting your history is not what we're asking for. We're just saying, what, what lessons did we actually collect from that that can help us take the next step? Um, and coming to the, the uh, activities that you do, even with EACS, I mean, you've been going from city to city, region to region um, during your holidays because you work in California, but you actually come to Armenia not only to see your, your family or, or to be in your family home, but actually to implement these kinds of important projects, especially about sports. Now tell me why children's education and sports. So um, after the 2020 war, you know, we all analyzed it. Why is it that happened to us? And what came to my mind, and, and I know every Armenian knows this, that we're individualists. We are, you know, we have our own opinion on everything and we have we're good at individual sports we're good at chess we're good at weightlifting wrestling but we're not good at team sports and that team mentality that can be instilled in children as children can be very important in the future in their who who they become if they're a politician or if they are uh, you know chief of an organization that is very important and it came to me that as a physician who is watching this non-communicable diseases, which are, you know, all the cancer, diabetes, and all these diseases start from childhood because people are not doing sports because people are not eating right, but the sports is extremely important. The being active is ex extremely important. And that idea came uh, to me that if we start organizing team sport mentality, start putting our children from age five, six, seven into team sports, into basketball, not only we can develop team mentality, but it's also very important for girls as an empowerment because a girl who plays basketball, who is the captain of the basketball team, Team, she's going to be for life a leader. So uh, also the kids will be away from their iPhones and it's going to be very good for smoke against smoking that is so, uh, you know, violent and prevalent in Armenia. So that uh, gave me an idea that going through sports, working with the government, uh, first of all, to change the curriculum, but also working with the finding my, my own, uh, doing my own needs assessment. So uh, thanks to organizations like Co-op and FAR, I actually visited many, many uh, sports facilities in the villages and those darling children, those hardworking villagers, and looked at their, uh, the facilities which are unfortunately in very, very bad condition. So I think as, uh, you know, it is gonna be very important for Armenia to pay attention to our children and developing this team mentality through team sports. Um, it's very commendable because I, I think um, you talk about children's education through sports um, and I, th I immediately when you talk about children I think about your daughter Elise. You have two children, a son and a daughter um, and when she was in grade five, so 10 or 11 years old more or less, you and her embark on this project of writing the book that you mentioned earlier which is the, on, the, on the other side of Mount Ararat. Mm -hmm. Um, and this goes back to, you know, discovering um, uh, a lot of the historical letters and, and journeys that your, your family underwent, including Haranush, Beklarian, I think her last mm -hmm. name was. Mm -hmm. Well, you, spoke, you mentioned something about women, and I think about Elise. What are the lessons or the words of advice you give to a young woman who's already, you know, embarked on her professional journey on how to... Um, you know, be uh, f to how to fulfill what she has set out to do in her life, her mission, regardless of all the challenges that women face in their in their development or their careers. What would you? What advice would you give her or to any other young woman who has an intention to build a strong career? I think it's a great question that I don't have a really uh, you know perfect answer, but I think that brings me to the education. I would, you know, doing research, I, Elise and I read 
probably five, 10,000 pages of information about Vaughn. And uh, just to see who were the uh, players and, and that learning process when you try to learn something, it actually not only enriches you, but it moves you to another idea. You know, when you learn about, when I went to Vaughn to learn about Vaughn, I learned about Urartu and Urartu became my other, you know, just a, another love of my life because on a sidetrack you, side you actually you actually you actually even wrote a play about that that yeah. was performed here so yes. talk about really so that's, fulfilling you know going that that's what i want to tell you know certainly urartu is i think armenia needs to pay more attention to our history and to learn about urartu which is a fascinating fascinating kingdom that you know we have beautiful sites here that unfortunately there is no money to help with the preservation, excavation. But the idea of, I think, each girl and to everyone actually, my recommendation is learn the thing, love what you're learning, be it in your profession or be it as a side hustle, which was for me, it was a side hustle. And that kind of enriches you, it gives you new ideas and it moves you forward and you know people around you. Right, Do you, you're pretty brave and very courageous uh you know you whatever you set your mind to it obviously your your father robert Abakan and your mother lena encouraged that you being the only girl in the family you have two brothers uh, one older one younger um, you also have a husband that's been pretty supportive it's hard to find a husband that actually could be that supportive to ensure that a spouse could could have fair and equal opportunity um, but it's not always the case obviously right but how how should we you know where does this braveness and courageous courageousness come from is it part of your again you mentioned epigenetics is it part of your genes is it something that's innate um, you know we're perseverant as people is it because of the trauma that we faced and that actually has you know really made us much more resilient to face any kind of adversity what is it for you that makes you so courageous and brave Laura, I think you said it all. It's definitely my genetics. My dad, who was uh, another I extremely positive person, and they encouraged us. You know, we, I grew up in a family with two boys, but I never felt like I'm any different. And actually, I was encouraged, and education was the number one. I mean, not having a PhD in my family was not a possibility. Everybody you know, has everybody to have has a PhD. PhD. So it was a, uh, it's this, you got to go to Moscow study. If there was a, at the time possibility of going outside of the Soviet Union, I would have been sent, encouraged. So that love of education, my dad you uh, always told us, you know, when you're going to bed, when you close your eyes, think, have you learned something today? That day. That yeah. Day. And if you haven't, then your day was wasted. Wasted. So How that is, that's kind of my motto. And that's what I try teaching my children. So having that positive energy that came from my dad and, you know, learn, learn, learn. And of course, meeting Jerry, who was uh, being an Armenian, you know, who also had, his family was also a genocide survivor. Actually, I'm a grandchild of a genocide survivor. My husband is a child of a- From one side of the family. From, from his yeah. father's yeah. side. But also Jerry being an, I would say, unusual Armenian man who always also supported me and, you know, helped me to go through becoming a physician in US, which with two little children was very hard. I could have never done it if not for having a, such a supportive husband. Spouse, yeah. So in a sense, um, you know, all these things, I guess I've been lucky. <laughs> to or, or attracted that to, to yourself in, in many ways, you know, it's, yeah. uh, you attract what you, you sow. So that's also something that's but interesting. That would be my main kind of a, what I would suggest to young generation is, you know, education and, uh, you know, try to learn every day and you know facebooks and phones and computers i mean they can help you learn too but you know that uh, i to me that's extremely important mm -hmm. interesting the the um I, there's a question that came to me earlier when we were talking about your family history uh, but it's, it's come to me again. Uh, I think it's some, something is telling me I have to ask this question. Now, a lot of researchers uh, recently have been showing how uh, trauma impacts not just mental health, but also physical health. And I don't mean trauma that we've witnessed in our lifetime, but even historically transmitted uh, transgenerational past 
traumas could actually impact not just mental health and physical, uh, but physical health as well. Um, I, I think the, um, the one thing that comes to my mind is that, that we could tend to carry our histo historical traumas in our bodies and maybe a lot of the autoimmune diseases or inflammations or even the way our nervous systems are wired could actually be impacted by, by what our parents or grandparents have felt in terms of hyper stress. Uh, I'm not saying that you have the answers for this, but what are your preliminary thoughts about this this concept? I 100% I agree. There is a, we in medicine we call it psychosomatic, which what it means is that the impact of a stress and trauma to your physical health, and 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 not only you know I think that one of the problems that the world is facing today is all this, you know Armenia faces a lot of smoking, and that's a and and that's a where where people are there is an anxiety. Anxiety, you know, uh, there is a lot of obesity. That's another anxiety, you know. It's like people are anxious and the way to cope, you're eating or you're smoking. So, and I think that at, a, at some level, I think our generational trauma, us feeling like we are minions, no one, no one paid attention to us in uh, 1915. No one paid attention to us in 2020. 2020. Exactly. These are traumas that definitely are impact, uh, impacting our physical health. And again, taking people towards, I've met so many people, so many men, physicians even, who are smoking and saying, you know what, I don't care. I think we need to look more into that and we need a massive therapy for our nation. You I know. fully agree. Some yeah. kind of a collective healing. Is collective healing. And again, bringing this back to my sports. You know, I think a way, uh, I'm not saying that's the only way. But it I could be an... Uh, it support. could be a very important way of healing us is the team sports, becoming a team, parents and grandparents coming to watch their children play. In, and it's not about winning or losing, but it's about, you know, spending that energy and it's about playing and making kids healthier. I think that's, um, you know, the impact of a certainly stress on and mental health on physical health is very well shown. You're absolutely right. I mean, I look at my own kids when they're in the, the basketball team. I mean, um, you can't say it's because of one player that they were able to win. It's because of the commitment and the way they've actually coordinated each other to support each other to actually meet the goal, which is winning or, or losing or whatever it is. But that, that team spirit is also so important regardless of the results of the, of the game. Um, I actually, I can't wait to see the, the, what you'll be doing, uh, but I have one last question. What would you want your legacy to be? Um, I know it's a tough question. It's People, well, <laughs> I, know, I, don't, I don't mean oh to put God. you against, no one but it's, ever... it's always nice to, to know, you know, what, what is it that you would like to leave behind? I mean, you've got two kids, you know, you'll eventually have also, you know, continued generations, but what would the legacy be? Well, I, um, what I try to, I think what I try to instill in my children and me being, I've, lived, I've been living in United States for 30 years, but, you know, my heart is in Armenia. My, and I teach my children to love Armenia, to do everything above and beyond for Armenia because at the end of the day this is our homeland and just like for my grandma it was Vaughn for me it's Yerevan and beat team sports beat medicine that needs a lot of work in Armenia I think that collectively if we you know frequently we get upset we get unhappy with the disorganization with many things but I think what I want to instill in my community in my children is a love for our country and just push it, push it forward. I uh, Amen to that. <laughs> <laughs> Mariam Manukyan, I'm so, so pleased that you accepted my invitation and for inviting us to this beautiful place. I feel not only your energy, but the energy of the physicists working around us. Thank you. Uh, I hope that EAX uh, really fulfills all of the uh, mission and the purpose that you've uh, outlined because I think it's very important. And I wish you all the best. Thank you. Thank you so much, Lara. Thank you, Mariam.